Hello everyone, my name is Susan Day and I'd like to talk to you today about how to become a great guest blogger. Here are some of the benefits of being a guest blogger. You get links to your site on other sites and blogs. This is great for your SEO. You get lots of practice writing content on a wide variety of subjects. You get to meet some interesting people and share your story with them. And you get your name and brand out there in a way which lasts a much longer than an online ad. It is my goal to try and write 100 guest posts in one year. So the, record, the time of this recording, it's um, mid-April, mid to late April, sorry. Um, and I am going great guns. I am already 13 posts ahead of my target. Um, I'm going to go through you why I'm doing it and how you could do it as well. It doesn't involve any clever logarithms or sneaky tactics. It just employs common sense, a healthy dose of generosity and perseverance. So why write 100 blog posts in a year? I began this project about mid-January and even I'm surprised at how well it's going. My goal was to get my website out there and to improve traffic. It's a young website and while I'm still blogging furiously, I want to see if getting links to it on a wide variety of blogs would also help. I began this website in October of last year, 2016. Now I manage content for a number of sites and I write content for a number of sites, including my own. This particular site, which the 100 posts will link back to, has a similar number of blog posts to another site, which I manage. They both have roughly 210 blog posts each. However, the Google ranking is much different. The site I've linked back on my guest posts to date, and I haven't reached the 100 posts yet, is averaging about 170 visitors a week. The other website is only 12, and it is much, much older. The reason for this is that search engines reward back and internal links. So how are you gonna get started as a guest blogger? Ask, if you don't ask, you don't get. <laughs> but be polite and highlight what's in it for your host. Offering to do something for them in return, even though it's a well-written post is great for their SEO and yours, you might wanna do something else for them. But ask, if they say no, that's okay. If they say yes, get started writing. Use direct messaging. The most popular thing I've found is using Twitter's direct messaging tool to contact people who follow me. However, I don't try to sell them anything. Make sure I make sure they know that, that I'm doing something that's important and that's going to be something in it for them and their followers. I actually tell a story. I don't lecture. Uh, most of the people are happy to help you achieve your dreams and your goals, but they also have a responsibility to their followers. So this is what I do. I offer to write a to about a topic that would interest their followers, not mine and not on my topic. And I've written some really strange and wonderful things. I appeal to their sense of what's right and I ask them to help me spread the word about children's literacy. The website is called Astro's Adventures Book Club. Dot com. Its main goal is to encourage grandparents to connect with their grandchildren using books and literature. I'm a children's author and I'm passionate about children's literacy. Most people are also passionate about children's literacy and I appeal to that and, and ask them to help me spread the word. I'm polite, I try to be funny, but I'm always graciously accept their offer with a great deal of gratitude. Pin an invitation on your profile. You can pin an invitation for a guest blogger on your Facebook page or your Twitter profile. But be honest, don't bang on about approving their SEO or yours. Instead, explain exactly what you want and what you're going to give them in return. Also add an image which is compelling and will grab their attention. 
people don't really look that much at the written word and some of these platforms don't allow you to put a nice big fat juicy heading so use something that will grab their attention straight away make sure there is something in it for your host most people are happy to help you like I explained earlier but in the end they'll want to know what's in it for them they also need to know you have their followers best interest at heart explain the benefits of hosting guest bloggers and using external links offer to do something for them in return I have reviewed books I have hosted them on my I have allowed site I have written a review of their website on my blog I have um, shared their Twitter um, feeds for a number of months I have babysat their children. No, I haven't done any of those things. But I've got the last one. But yeah, offer to do something, review a book. I'll, I'll offer to support them in some way. Or ask them, how can I help you? Be flexible and write about what they want. Don't force your own agenda. Include your bio and one link at the end of the article. Don't expect your host to find out, find, sorry, find your links for you. Give them everything they need to publish in one document one document I also like a title or save my documents with my name first it might sound a bit arrogant but I know myself when I receive a lot of information and emails and I'm saving files I might see something and think gosh what's that about or who sent me that but my name is the first thing I write and then the title and then the website just to help my guests, sorry, my host, find my website on the, uh, find my article on their computer after they've saved it. Also provide royalty-free images. Um, I've got a link there. Uh, if you want to know um, some of the best ways to get ones that are not Pixabay, that, you, that are being overused to the point where um, they're a little bit humdrum and they lose their impact, I have a great source for royalty-free images. Contact me if you need any more help. Be polite and gracious if they say no. Nobody likes a sore loser. Always accept the declines graciously and don't say things like, oh, you'll be sorry or perhaps next time. Instead, set yourself up as the prize and thank them and move on. Make them think that they might be missing out on something. If you are rude, or ignore them it may do you harm in the long run you never know who you were talking to who they know and and how your paths may cross in the future be accommodating and patient some people are not as savvy as you are when it comes to understanding the benefits of hosting a guest blogger or being a guest blogger send them this link here what are what are the benefits of hosting and being a great guest blogger on getonlinefast.net. Wait patiently for people to get back to you if they say they're interested. If they ignore your message or don't respond, then don't worry about them. If you haven't heard back from them after they've said they'd be happy to host your article, perhaps give them a week and then, and then ask them again. Provide examples. This is one thing I didn't count on when I first started this in January. I just assume people, I, give, I invite people to go to my blog so they can see what, you know, what I'm about and who I am. But I didn't think that providing examples would be very important. <laughs> However, it was one, something like the second thing somebody asked me. And I, hadn't, I didn't have any articles published at that time, so I had to wait um, about three weeks and I put together three or four and I sent them to her. And she was very happy with them. And it made me realise what a valuable asset these um, articles I already have published are. If you go to getonlinefast.net, up the top you'll see a link to 100 guest posts in one year. That's my campaign and that's where you'll see all the links to my guest posts. 
I now use that, that page on that website to encourage other people to see what I can do. And that helps them make a decision about whether they're going to host me as a guest or not. Okay, so you've got to keep your promise. If someone is kind enough to accept your request to write for their blog, then do so in a very timely manner. I wouldn't leave it more than a week. If you can't get it to them in that time, then by all means let them know. Tell them that you're busy or that you're um, struggling with something. Be honest, whatever you do. Because you might, you might say, oh, I'm busy babysitting my grandchildren. And then they check you out on Facebook and you're on some wonderful holiday in Hawaii. Oh, that's not going to wash. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and also keep your promise. If you say you're going to write an article about the importance of keeping eggs in the fridge, then write about it. Always have your bio at the end with the links to your back to your site. But, yeah. Make sure the articles are relevant, that they um, really speak to their audience and that you don't have the hidden agenda. Once it's published, share the post. I can't, I can't emphasise this enough. I've hosted guest posts and never seen them again. When someone guests on my blog, I will email them the link and ask them to share it. And I remind them that I have already shared the post, even if it was only minutes before it was published. I do this because I want them to become engaged with what they do and to be proactive. Some people I don't even have to ask, but others you just need a gentle nudge. Now, if your host has provided share buttons on a wide variety of social platforms, use every single one of them, even if they're not your preferred social media platform. If you don't have accounts with them, open one. Um, this is because the content you're providing is suitable to, to their followers. Now, they've chosen those social media links because that's where they are and that's where their followers are. So you need to um, support that. And look, you just don't know who's listening. You don't know who's hidden away in the back of Pinterest, Google+, Instagram, anything. There could be somebody out there. And, of course, it's going to help the shareability and your SEO ranking. I always leave a comment thanking the host for having me as well. I think that's just good manners. So here are the two websites that I've been talking about. astrosadventuresbookclub.com is my um, go-to site. That's what I'm, my brand. That's what I'm publicising. This is what I want. So this is where I want people to go. Getonlinefast.net has all the information about how I'm actually doing it. There's a long list of the, the guest posts which I have been published on so far. Now, some of them are mentions, but they all include my link back to my site or to something that I've been involved with. You're more than welcome to go and check it out. Like I mentioned earlier, it's in the menu up the top, the link, 100 blog posts in one year. I'll try to keep it updated as best I can. Um, but if you've got any questions, here is the email address, info get online fast at gmail.com or getonlinefast.net for more information and blog posts. Thank you for listening. I hope you're ready. Your fingers are poised over the keyboard now as I speak and you're ready to hit the guest post. If you'd like me to be a guest, please don't hesitate to ask. If you'd like to be a guest on my blog, and I have quite a few, yeah, hit the email and let me know. It's been a pleasure talking to you. I hope you're having a fabulous day and goodbye for now.